Great to be with you, Peter Ballas here, cardiologist. Now, a short video on what an echocardiogram is. Now, an echocardiogram is an ultrasound that we use to assess the heart function and the size of the heart and to look at the valves. You may have been asked to have an echocardiogram if there was more information needed to assess some symptoms you might be experiencing. For example, shortness of breath, swelling of your ankles, chest pains, palpitations, or you might have a history of high blood pressure, a family history of heart disease that your doctor wants to get a bit more information about your heart. You might have been born with issues with the heart respect to holes in the heart or congenital heart defects. Well, you might have valve problems where the valves are narrowed or leaking. Well, the heart ultrasound is the best test to look at all these in great detail. There are two main ways that we have of doing an echocardiogram. One, and the standard one, is called a transthoracic echocardiogram. And that's an ultrasound where we use the probe from the outside of the chest to look at the heart. And then the other a little bit more involved is called a transesophageal echocardiogram and that's where similarly we have a probe that looks at the heart but this time we get you to swallow the probe down from the mouth into the esophagus to give us more information given that the probe is actually closer to the heart inside the chest cavity. So let's talk a bit about the transthoracic echocardiogram first. Now, the transthoracic echocardiogram is a simple test. It's performed in a radiology center or a cardiology center where you lie on the examination couch. You normally take the, the clothes uh, above the waist off and you'll have a gown placed on you. And then you'll lie on the couch, often more so on the left side. And you'll have a person who takes the, uh, the pictures called a sonographer who will initially place a couple of dots, LECG dots, around the chest, and then will use this probe with a little bit of gel. And then at various positions, I'll take some pictures and get you to take a breath in and hold your breath. And that allows the sonographer to get accurate assessment of how the heart is functioning, to look at various measurements of the heart and the size of various chambers in the heart, but also to look at the valves. It's a test that, as I said, takes about 20 to 30 minutes. There's no particular preparation that is needed for this test. So you don't really need to have any fasting before, before the procedure. And it's often a painless procedure, but sometimes because we need to press quite firmly with the transducer, you might get a bit of discomfort around the chest. And uh, the results are then provided to your doctor who will then have an accurate assessment of the changes of your heart and to see whether any further testing needs to be performed. There are no real risks with an ultrasound. There is no radiation exposure because it uses sound waves. And as I said, it's a very, very safe test to provide a lot of information about how your heart is functioning. The second type of echocardiogram is one called a transesophageal echocardiogram. And that is a bit more involved, does require some preparation. It's often performed in hospital where you have to stay for a few hours and it involves a period of fasting. And this is a test that uses a same probe, the transducer that looks at the heart. But this time, rather than doing this scan from the outside of the chest wall, where we're often limited by the ribs, the muscles, the fat, uh, we get a better view of the heart when we get you to swallow the little probe from the mouth into the esophagus. And the probe there, you're under anaesthetic, you're not really aware of the procedure being performed, but it gives us a very, very accurate assessment and often useful in certain types of heart conditions to get that better view to look at whether there are any issues or not with respect to the heart. Now, because it's a procedure, you are 
in hospital, you are given some sedation to keep you nice and comfortable. And initially to numb the back of the throat, you will have a spray applied. Now that spray can be not the most pleasant tasting, but that numbs the back of the throat. And when you are, when the probe has been delivered, you might be inclined to gag, and that's not uncommon. But in those situations, you will be given some sedation just to keep you nice and comfortable. Once the probe is down there, you're often not aware of anything and you're, you're asleep with some of the sedation. And the doctor who performs the test will be able to get a very accurate assessment. And in particular, it's often done in cases where we want a bit more information about the valves, where we want a bit more information about whether there might be any clots in the heart that we can't accurately see with the scan from the outside, well this transesophageal test provides greater images, greater quality, and allows us to be definitive and to make sure there are no issues there. So following the procedure, and that normally takes about 30 to 40 minutes, you will be a little sleepy, so you will be in the recovery for a few hours where we can just monitor your, your, uh, your breathing and um, your heart rate and blood pressure and often after a few hours you're allowed to go home on the same day. Because it is a procedure that is in hospital, and as I said, you have to be fasting on an empty stomach, so please check with your doctor who's referring you for the test as to what specific instructions are needed for you to have the, the, the test itself. Sometimes the test may be combined with another procedure called a cardioversion, and that's a procedure where you might have a condition known as atrial fibrillation, so we may initially start off with the transesophageal echocardiogram, which gives us a very clear picture of the heart inside to make sure there's no little clots floating around in the heart. And if that's all clear, we can often deliver a shock from the outside to try to zap the heart back into normal regular rhythm. So that's another time where you might have a transesophageal echocardiogram. It provides us with more information because we're able to scan with the probe inside the, the esophagus we're not having to be limited by the, the ribs, the muscles, the tendons around the heart. That can often sometimes obscure an accurate view. And that's really why we want to do the transesophageal test if we're seeking further information, further clarification based on the initial transthoracic test that you've had. So that was an overview of a transthoracic and a transesophageal echocardiogram. They are very simple but very useful test to have to look at how the heart and valves are functioning. And thanks for joining me. Until the next video, bye for now.